1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. I'm going to share with you just the three words that I believe God wants us to live by and to be constantly reminded of. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13. Now abide faith, hope, love. These three but the greatest of these is love. Someone say amen. And Gospel of Luke chapter 1 Gospel of Luke chapter 1 and verse 34 and verse 35 actually 36 and 37 and Mary said to the angel how can this be since I do not know a man and the angel answered and said to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you therefore also the Holy One who, will, who is to be born will be called the Son of God now indeed Elizabeth your relative has also conceived a son in her old age and this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren for with God nothing will be impossible then Mary said behold the maid servant of the Lord let it be done to me according to your word and the angel departed from her if you can subtitle this uh, brief talk an encouragement that I will do you can call it just hope faith and love hope faith and love if I can ask kindly for all of us to just um, pay attention for next 15 to 20 minutes hope faith and love the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit who is with us he doesn't operate in any kind of environment in any kind of atmosphere even the plants we buy cannot flourish in every kind of soil bananas cannot grow in Alaska not because they're hating on the Alaska it's because Alaska's environment and atmosphere cannot sustain them and they will quickly die there the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit requires a certain attitude requires certain atmosphere not just a conference hype but an everyday constant consistent temperature to exist in our heart for the Holy Spirit to function. Can somebody say amen? Our life has ups and downs. Our life has births and funerals. Our life has promotions, demotions. Our life it has valleys and it has mountains. Our life it has laughters and it has tears. Our life it has problems and it has fulfilled promises our life it has mess and it also has miracles our life is not always just one it has a conjunction of both it's sometimes it's like a roller coaster but when life goes up or life goes down there's something about our inner life that always has to we have to fight to protect it constant can somebody say amen because the holy spirit who is with us he depends, he relies, he, he wants and he desires that kind of atmosphere to be maintained. He will visit us but to live with us we must create an environment in our heart and our emotions that allows him to work. And I believe that these three realities they open the ways and the doors for the Holy Spirit. First is hope. Somebody say hope. Hope. Hope there's a deficit of hope today in this generation like nothing else. We live in probably the most hopeless generation that has ever lived on this earth. We have better technology, better medicine, we have better everything but all of this doesn't bring people hope. Hope is when you are optimistic that things will get better. Not, we're not just talking about now on earth. We're talking about in general that things will get better. People who do not know Jesus Christ actually do not have basis for their hope. Their hope has cracks. For us as Christians, we have no basis for hopelessness. An unbeliever has no basis for their hope. Their hope is just a dream. It's just an idea that is no, has no basis for it. For us as a Christian, hopelessness for us is baseless. Where does our hope comes from? Our hope, the Bible says, the blessed hope comes from the fact 
not the fact that we will get healed not the fact that our family member will turn around not the fact we will finally get the house our hope doesn't come from the fact that our life will change the basis of our hope is the fact we have a dual citizenship one here and one in the world we're headed into that is where our hope comes from is that what we're going through is not as big and important as what we're going to and it's not just the land of dreams it's not just the land of breakthrough where we're headed to is all of us are headed into eternity and those of us who are believers we are headed into eternity with Jesus Christ first five seconds in heaven and you will forget every single thing you lose your sleep over on this earth first five seconds meeting the face of Jesus Christ you will plead and beg never ever to return back to this stinking earth that hope where we are headed is supposed to be motivation for us today for many of us the only time we think about heaven is when someone dies for many of us heaven is a spare tire we use when the tire goes flat God doesn't want heaven to be something you think about when someone passes away. God wants heaven to be something you think about every single day. Why? Because you're headed there. Why? Because every day you live, you're living every single time. You're going to have less summers, less winters and less falls. That's where you are headed. And that's not supposed to frighten you or scare you. That should excite you because where you're headed is so much better than what you're going through. I remember when we were in Ukraine one of the things that when we had few months in Ukraine and a few months before we would immigrate to the United States and we already received our papers we received our tickets you know my life in Ukraine at that moment changed nothing changed but there's something about the anticipation of moving into a new country that makes your mood go to the roof oh come on you all know that and what happens on Friday statistically 10% of your happiness increases on Friday why well because your boss gives you a promotion on Friday no it's because well, you know two things paycheck and the weekend you must understand every single day you are headed closer to your Friday the ultimate Friday is when God will give the reward to his saints and when God will open the weekend that will never come with Monday but it will last forever and it's the weekend of heaven somebody say amen The Bible calls us prisoners of hope. That means every single time when you're going through difficult times, when you're going through challenging things, or maybe you're going through something awesome, you always have to in your mind keep this check. You're not going to live here forever. Your citizenship is in heaven. Heaven is your home and you should not let your roots on this earth go too deep so that when it's your time to exit, you will not look to this earth as your home. But with gladness, you will look to that earth as your home. It's like the story of the two people that died in one village. One was a very famous but a very ungodly person and the other person he was a Christian and he gave all of his possessions away and when this famous ungodly wealthy person was passing away everyone was saying this he is leaving his home. When a believer was dying they said he was going home. Keep your hope alive every single day. Keep your hope inside of your heart alive every single day. Jesus said if they persecute you he said rejoice. Think about it. When you're physically beaten, when you're removed from your job, when you are made fun of because of your faith and Jesus said rejoice. How could that possible? And he wasn't saying rejoice because one day they'll get saved. He said rejoice. He said because your reward in heaven is great. My friend we're all gonna come to an end of our life sooner or later and we must understand we have to live our life in such a way that when that day is coming we will not be ashamed. Apostle Paul says for me death is gain. Why was death gain to him? Because Christ was his aim. Because Christ was the purpose. When you live with Jesus you have hope and many of you today you're looking even as I'm looking at some of you right now it's I see your life, school, boyfriend, 
girlfriend maybe health issues maybe finances issues it just begins to wear you down I want to remind each one of you you have a spare tire that shouldn't be a spare tire but should be your motivation you are not gonna live forever here you are headed into an eternity where you're gonna spend time forever with Christ so I'm gonna encourage each one of you today live with the hope no matter how hard, no matter what the doctor has said, even if God forbid that sickness will bring end to your life or to the life of your relative, it, it brings end to the life. It doesn't bring end to them because we have an eternity we're headed to. Somebody say amen. 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 As important as, you know, working very hard, working out is very important. It, it, thinking, take, uh, taking vitamins is very important. Going to the doctor is very important. Not smoking is extremely important. Not drinking is extremely, extremely important. Having your insurance, not cheating on your taxes, you know, not cheating on your spouse, not doing all of these sinful things. As important as they are because they prolong our life, you must understand one thing. When we will arrive in heaven, we are not going to be in heaven wondering. We wished to live a little bit longer. But we will want to live a little bit longer on this earth for only one reason and that is to see more people saved amen. to see more people saved can somebody say amen? amen the second thing is faith faith hope is for the future faith is for now god wants us not only to have hope it means something that we look forward to when we are going to die something that we look forward to that things will get better in our life but god wants us to also have faith for now having faith for the, having hope for the future should not make me a person who has no faith for tomorrow and I'm gonna say something else is that unless you have hope for tomorrow you will always have a deficit of faith for today you can't have a great faith for today if you're completely in hopelessness about tomorrow your tomorrow about your tomorrow there always has to be hope you gotta be a prisoner of hope because as a believer things always work for our good bible doesn't say things always are good but the bible says things will work for our good no matter however it ends you will always end with christ with jesus in a positive side either here on this earth or there in eternity whatever that happens with the sickness whatever that happens with the business even with that relationship you must understand we always land good we are on the winning side Jesus is on our side we are on the winning side so there is, has to be a hopelessness and many times for people to have hope is like a foreign language it's so hard it's so difficult because our mind gravitates toward hopelessness our mind gravitates toward something worse always happening our mind gravitates toward the fact that maybe i am not saved maybe you know i'm not gonna go to heaven is heaven even real our mind gravitates toward that that's why you gotta move your mind into the word of god and stop letting your mind boss you around your mind is not your boss your mind supposed to be your slave if your mind is your boss it will lead you into the feelings and circumstances but the bible says we have a blessed hope in jesus christ so fill yourself with hope somebody say amen, amen. but second one is faith faith is now now means though i acknowledge as a christian this earth is not heaven but I have faith that with faith I can fight that whatever I face on this earth shouldn't also be allowed to become hell. God didn't promise that this earth will be heaven but he gave us promise that with him on this earth we can overcome anything and any challenge we can turn into a blessing and we can experience his kingdom on this earth. Faith now. It's when you believe that nothing is impossible to God now not tomorrow not next month I like what Lewis said thousands locally and millions globally that was hope and then he right away disclosed that he had no faith when he said and it's not gonna happen next Wednesday how does he know And we always like to say that what we do is we want to protect our faith by not letting it out 
See, that is hope when you say, you know what, thousands locally and millions globally. A hundred percent. That's gonna happen. It might happen tomorrow. But you can't live in faith. The Bible says righteous man lives by faith, not by hope. Hope is good. Things will get better. God, you know, I'm gonna go to heaven. That is good. But you have to start moving into faith. Where in faith you begin to stand on what God says and believe the impossible believe what God's word says and believe that God is able to do it today and many times what we're doing is right away we guarantee ourselves says oh maybe and may, maybe maybe you gotta put maybe what it belongs in the trunk but you gotta believe that God is able he can open doors for your finances today your phone where you always get negative news can be used as a device where you receive positive news today. Your email where you get notices for your late bills can be a notice for something else today. That the fact that you are maybe colorblind and you cannot see and you can go today and God can open your eyes. The fact that your ear is hurting and maybe everyone prayed for you and you may say well listen everyone is not God. Your faith has to be now faith is. It's good to have hope but it, you gotta start moving to faith. You say what if nothing happens? See that is not faith. Faith is not in believing for a miracle. Faith is believing in a miracle maker he never fails miracles fail miracle maker never fails healing fails a healer never fails you know someone can get saved and get lost and everything but the savior never fails paul never said i know what i believe paul said i know who i believe can somebody say amen your faith your faith is not in a miracle your faith is not in a breakthrough your faith is in God who never changes that's why when we pray for someone or when we prayed for 10 years we prayed every service God we want to see healings we prayed for his sick people we didn't see a lot of healings people say how could you still have the faith our faith was never based on the results of our prayer it came from the fact God promised it hinges on what God promised and when miracles happen our faith still hinges on what God promised when miracles don't happen our faith hinges on what God promised when life changes our faith hinges on what God promised why because it's faith if I anchor my faith in what happens to you I will be the most disappointed man if I anchor my faith in how I feel, I will be the most disappointed man. If I anchor my faith in what God does not do, at least for me right now, I will be most disappointed man. My faith is anchored on what God has said and who God is. If I don't see a healing for the rest of my life, do I change my faith in healing? I've never believed in healing. I always believed in a healer. And because I believe in a healer, I will see healings. You will see healings because a healer never fails. What faith does is faith creates a problem because faith puts you in above your reality and then the reason why many people don't live by faith is because faith is complicated. No, it's, it's very easy. The child can understand. When I say complicated, what I mean is it puts you in a war zone where your revelation is in conflict with your reality and for many people it's easier to live in the reality than fight with the reality but what faith does is faith when you begin to believe in what God says and you may be poor but God says you are blessed and you're standing and agreeing with that because you want to change your reality God lifts you up above the reality and then as Apostle Paul says is that there is a fight of faith it means the faith begins to fight and many people will do anything except fight they'll fight with anyone except the reality They'll fight with their brothers and with their sisters, with their spouse, with their children, with the strangers, with anybody except with the devil. 
but see people of faith we fight and reserve our fight we reserve our anger we reserve our rage we reserve our fight against the one who the fight's supposed to be against the devil his angels and all of his works somebody say amen amen, amen. I want to challenge each one of you today do not be a slave to your reality your reality will only mess you up your reality can be changed it can be overcome if you live by faith you say what if it's not going to be overcome what if it's going to be overcome faith always looks to God not at, at someone or ourselves and the third and the most important factor is love love now love I do not mean by you being single ready to mingle and you find somebody to connect with love I don't mean by you're married and you and your spouse now go on dates and you genuinely love one another and you bring flowers to one another love I don't mean by you are a mother or a father and you finally giving more attention to your children though that is extremely valuable all of these things are important love I don't even mean by your heart is moved by compassion and you started to take a little bit extra money and going feeding the homeless that is very important by love I mean is how God defined love in John 3 16 where the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever lives in him shall not perish but have everlasting life for God define love for us by showing that the best way to love someone is not just to help their life but to save their soul to save their soul to save their soul the story of Mary tells us a very interesting peculiar example when the Holy Spirit comes to Mary through an angel and an angel of the Lord tells Mary that God has a plan he wants to save the world but he wants to bring a savior into the world but God is looking for someone to partner with see God could have let Jesus be born on the street grow up on his own be completely independent and go and save the world but somehow God has chosen to partner with us and what God has chosen was this is God has chosen to use someone else's body and to plant within their body that seed and so that body will nurture that and then give birth to that through pain and then see that child grow up and eventually save the world the Holy Spirit the same way today is looking for us to land the Holy Spirit not our body but our soul and the purpose for our life so that he can fill it with what he wants to fill it with and we nurture that we water that we we align our life with that purpose and we see we give birth to that purpose we pay a price for that purpose and we see people's lives being impacted and then the Holy Spirit says I will bless you and people will call you blessed God wants your life to carry his child God has children his children see when God came to marry his child was Jesus Jesus but did you also know that God has a child named Pedro did you also know that God has a child named John and he wants someone to open their life and to carry not their child someone else's child and Mary had to go through scandal Mary had to go through the possibility of losing Joseph Mary had to go through actually being disconnected from her family only because she chose to carry a child that wasn't even her own so many people would have just aborted it and simply said you know what this is not my child too much work too much pain I'm not gonna do that I tried it this is no longer cute people making fun of me Joseph doesn't understand but Mary said listen whatever price I have to pay but I gotta help God 
no God doesn't need any help but God wants to partner with us and she says I'm gonna carry this child I'm gonna give birth to this child I will protect this child I will do whatever it takes and the Holy Spirit says if you do that I will help you I will allow my angels to surround to support you I will let wise men to come I will let shepherds to come I will do all of these things why because you have taking something that's precious to me and you're carrying it Do you know that you can do that too? Anytime you make your purpose of life, not only to make money, get married and get a house, but your purpose of life saying, Lord, you have children. They are lost and they are in my heart. They are in my prayer list. Something begins to happen. The Holy Spirit begins to work through your life and He begins to save them through that. God is not going to save our city by us saying Lord that is a great idea to save the city thousands locally and millions globally fantastic idea I'm not sure if you knew that but this fantastic idea just want to let you know great awesome idea I would love to be a part of that but that's all God wants you to give him your purpose your focus and when we give God our heart when we say God here I am you can place your child your children you can place that neighborhood you can place that family God you can place these people I don't know them God they're not my biological siblings and God I do not have a physical affection for them as I would have for my own mother or my own father but God you blessed me with the fact that my father and my mother my brother and my sister is serving you and I don't want my heart now to be available only to business only to be available to my dream I want my heart to be available to carry a child that is yours that you love you care for and you want you died for I want to carry the child Lord and when you begin to say that you know you say but how that's going to happen who am I and this is where the answer comes is that listen it's impossible with man it's possible with me the Holy Spirit begins to come and overshadow people who make a decision and say God it's not going to be about me I'm not just going to carry my dreams and ask you to carry my dreams God let's do a switch I carry what matters to you you carry what matters to me that's exactly what Mary did and I want us to do the same today whatever challenge you are facing whatever troubles life brings listen life is life but have to keep hope you gotta keep faith and you gotta keep love love is being vacant and available to the Holy Spirit to place a dream of God inside of our heart and pay a price to run with that dream till the end see that dream come to pass not to drop it not to abort it and not to give up and not to quit and not to trade it for something else and then you know what it does it activates God's angels because the moment Mary said okay Lord yes I will do that I don't know what's gonna happen I know it brings more trouble but I will do that God's angels begin to arrange things when we live our life only for ourselves many times that could actually only activate not God's angels but the enemy's angels God wants you to God wants you to activate God's angels by letting your life borrowing your purpose your soul and your heart for God's will this is my heart heartbeat this is why I live in my phone many people make different decisions some people make decisions to strap themselves with a bomb go in the mall and blow place up and while I regret and I cannot think in my mind how could somebody do that I am responsible for what I do with my life and so are you what decisions did you make how many people were impacted by that decision is that decision also to I want to strap myself with hope faith and love and every place that I walk in that my life will bear influence on that place I want to fill my prayer request that when my life is over there are thousands and millions are in the kingdom of God why because I made a decision to give my life to the Holy Spirit say Holy Spirit I will not only care for what's mine I will also care for what's yours 
and I will make yours mine. I will make what you care about. Those people maybe I don't even know their name today but God they exist. They have a social security and they have a fingerprints and they have a story and they have a sin they need to be redeemed with and God that is gonna go inside of me and I will not only carry it and lift my hands when somebody invites me to pray for them but God that will be the purpose of my life and something begins to happen. The Holy Spirit begins to move even in a greater way to see that happen. Do you know why you're here, many of you here today? Because someone was the Mary. Someone took you and got pregnant, if I could use that word, with prayer. Someone prayed you out. When I was upstairs today watching cars pulling in, watching Victoria. I remember the first time the Victoria came to service. Someone invited her. Someone started to pray. Watching you driving in. You were someone's prayer request. Today, you're a testimony. Well, who did that? The Holy Spirit. How did he do that? Not just an accident, pull you out of the crowd and brought you to church. No, he first came and he touched someone. He filled someone's heart with compassion. And then you came. There will be thousands and millions that will come exactly the same way. Let's not be bombarded with the challenges of our life. With the successes of our life that we miss hope, faith and love. Amen.